In this tutorial, I'm going to take you through the steps that you need to follow when you're building your very first PhoneGap Cordova application for Android. Uh, what you can see is right now I've actually gone to the Android developer website and the first thing you're going to have to do um, to successfully build and emulate and create your Android applications with PhoneGap using the terminal window is to actually download the Android SDK. Uh, so you can come to developer.android.com, download the um, Eclipse ADK. You don't want the Android Studio because it's still in beta and everything right now with uh, PhoneGap on Cordova works with the ADT. So let's go ahead and download that. Um, I've already gone ahead and got that downloaded. So I've got it up and running um, on my desktop. And so the very first time, again, you're looking at building out your development environment. And after you've done this, you won't have to do this again. But there's a couple of things that you want to make sure that you have running correctly. Uh, so first of all, you want to go into the window area and you want to download the open up the Android SDK manager. And the Android SDK Manager is a way for you to ensure that you always have the latest tools installed correctly on your desktop. Uh, one of the things that you're going to be looking for, and everything's just uh, setting up correctly here for me. One of the things you want to look for is you want to make sure that you have the, the latest updates installed and you want to make sure that you have Android SDK Build Tools version 19.1 and higher installed. Um, the reason why you need to have this is that it, you can go ahead and create projects with Cordova, but to be able to build them uh, from your terminal window, um, you need to have the um, build tools set up correctly. And so uh, we're not going to worry about installing any other updates right now. So that's the first thing you want to make sure you have the latest build tools and the latest updates. Um, the other thing you want to do is when you're in Eclipse, open up Eclipse and go to Window and select Android Virtual Device Manager. Oh, and I've got an error there, but another way to get to it is under the Android SDK, you can go Manage AVDs. That's the same thing. Um, I've got one already set up called Nexus 4. Um, I have a fairly small screen here, and so um, I want to have a small uh, demo area for being able to um, emulate the applications I create, but you can go ahead and create one. By default, there are no virtual devices created when you download Eclipse, so you will need to go ahead and create one. And so to do that, you just go in and say create, and so let's see now the different devices. You can see there's lots of different devices here, so I can go and select a Nexus 5, and you can type in the name for the AVD, and you have to make sure that the name um, is all one word. So you can do Nexus 5 with uh, no skin, and that's the minimum requirements for this to be created. If you did the name as Nexus 5 with a space, then the OK symbol wouldn't show up at the bottom, so it has to be all one word. Select OK. And what we have here is a virtualized Nexus 5 Android environment. Uh, one of the things that I'll caution you is that the AVDs for Android do run really slow. Um, I prefer actually building on an Android device itself because the build process is just much faster, um, which is actually the opposite of what it is for iOS. The iOS um, um, emulator is really fast. But it gives you something to, um, to actually see, and for the sake of this demo, um, I need to be able to do this on my desktop. So I have uh, Nexus 4 and Nexus 5. I'm actually going ahead and deleting the Nexus 5 because I don't really need it for this. And I'm going to close that out and close out the Android SDK Manager. And I'm going to close out Eclipse because I don't need it at the moment. So that's the, the first step. Um, you may also, um, when you're building for the first time, uh, run into an issue where you need to set up a, a path environment for your emulator. Um, I'm going to actually include the link for this in the uh, content and on the website. Um, but there's actually a special page that Cordova has created where if you're running into issues for the emulator, you can come in and make those changes. Um, I actually ran into this exact issue um, the very first time I was running the emulator, and this took maybe like five minutes to fix. So that was great. So now the cool thing, we actually can go ahead and start working in the command line. Now, in this instance, we're going to go ahead and we're going to build a, um, an Android application. 
um, but you can actually build iOS, Amazon Fire, uh, BlackBerry, Windows Phone 7 and 8, and Windows 8, and Firefox OS applications, but uh, we're just going to do Android for right now. And the th first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and install Cordova. And so we go over to our terminal window, and to install Cordova, you just type in sudo npm install dash g. Cordova and this will go ahead and ask for your password if you have one for your computer you should have add mine in and we'll now go ahead and download all of the pieces for the latest version of Cordova I'm just gonna let this run for a moment and now I have the latest version of Cordova installed so the next step is to go ahead and create our very first app. You can actually see that I'm going to be installing the app on the desktop. It just makes it easier for me in this tutorial to find everything. But you can actually install the app wherever you like. Uh, if we go to Cordova, we're actually going to just go ahead and copy the default. And what we have here is we have the command for Cordova to actually go ahead and power up Cordova to create um, a folder called Hello. And the app is going to be called um, com.example.hello, which would be how you would um, uh, define your workspace. And then the what app will actually appear as Hello World inside of the Android environment. So we're going to go ahead and paste that in. and it's going to go ahead and create a new application and the first thing we want to do is step into the into the folder for the application um, and the folder is called hello on the desktop and I can actually show you what that looks like so here's our folder and right now it doesn't actually have any platforms you don't have anything in there at all so we're going to go ahead and step into the folder and we're going to add in our first application and so we're going to add in a platform and in this instance we're going to add in Cordova platform add Android and we let that run away and what's going to do is actually build the Android application and project and we can actually go ahead and in the finder we can actually now see that we actually have a full Android environment and then the next step we want to do is go ahead and build our project. And so we can actually do Cordova build. And this is kind of a universal command. So if you have multiple uh, projects in there for iOS, uh, for Firefox, um, and for Android, it'll actually go ahead and build all of the different projects. And there we are. It's actually said that the build is successful, which is what we want to see. And now we want to be able to actually see what the application looks like inside of our emulator. And this goes back and references the AVD emulator that we created earlier on. So I'm going to go in and type in Cordova Emulate Android. And this will actually take a while. So we'll come back uh, in a moment after the emulator has started up. <clears throat> and here we can see our app is installed and running on the device. If you run into any other issues, you know, don't forget to go and check out the documentation that's available on Adobe's um, PhoneGap website. Uh, they have a lot. Um, works out really good though for building um, Android apps right from the terminal. You can actually then go back into Finder and you have a build folder and the build folder will actually have the APK files that you can upload to Google Play's App Store and publish your apps. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment in the comments below or send me an email and we'll answer them for you as soon as we get them. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.